Uh, let me welcome all of you to uh, the first episode of Chat with Matt on LinkedIn. Uh, our topic today is uh, the magic of networking, and perhaps that uh, title uh, requires a little explanation. Uh, networking is uh, talked about all the time, uh, and I refer to it as the magic of networking because there are elements of it that are a little bit hard to explain. Uh, things just sort of magically happen when you're networking appropriately. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I've uh, been chairman of the Financial Executives uh, Networking Group for a little over 25 years. Uh, it's uh, uh, one of the best hobbies I've ever come up with. And uh, just a little background on the networking group, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, we're uh, about uh, 35,000 plus uh, CFOs, controllers, and treasurers. Uh, tax, M&A, uh, all uh, pretty much financial people. Uh, and uh, what we, uh, what our purpose is, uh, we create an opportunity to network with each other. Uh, we're a, a very unusual organization in that uh, we're not a fee for service. Uh, a fee for service is where you, anybody can join. In order to join our networking group, you have to be sponsored by a friend who thinks enough of you to uh, ask you to join our uh, a uh, small gathering of uh, CFOs, controllers, and treasurers. Uh, our website uh, is uh, very easy to find, and uh, I hope you will visit it. Uh, every day uh, I publish uh, my evening editorial. Our newsletter is published uh, five days a week, and I post it to our website. Hopefully a lot of interesting topics, and uh, you're all welcome to uh, visit our website, even if you're not uh, in our financial niche and uh, look at my editorials. They're all open to the public. Uh, we also have uh, a video resources tab, which is available uh, to people who are not members. And again, you're welcome to uh, uh, visit our site and uh, use those resources. Uh, we're a society of friends and uh, even people who are not of the financial uh, uh, type, uh, you're, we, we welcome you to uh, participate with us in some way. Uh, my background, uh, real quick, no, no presentation would be uh, good without a 90-second announcement. Uh, I'll probably go a little bit longer. Uh, my background, briefly, is uh, primarily advertising and publishing. Uh, during the uh, 1980s, I was chief financial officer of, the, of uh, Levine, Huntley, Schmidt & Beaver, uh, a top 50 uh, advertising agency located in uh, Midtown Manhattan. Uh, they were a wild and crazy bunch of people. Uh, everything you know about the advertising business is true. Uh, if you've caught Mad Men, uh, it was a lot worse. So uh, book ended around that was uh, two tours in uh, publishing. I was with uh, Holt Reinhardt and Winston in the 1970s when they were owned by uh, CBS. And uh, my last corporate job, uh, which ended in uh, 1999, was with uh, what is now Thomson Reuters. I was with their uh, West Group division. Uh, doing business management in uh, Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, I left there. Uh, I have uh, uh, a networking group. Excuse me. The networking group is a hobby of mine. Uh, my living comes from my search practice. And it, uh, having relationships with so many uh, CFOs, controllers, and treasurers has uh, uh, made it possible for me to service all my friends and uh, also earn a living. So it's kind of a neat thing. I talk to my friends on Zoom and on the phone all day, and uh, it's a great life. Uh, I was uh, unemployed. Uh, people often ask me uh, why I do this. Uh, I was unemployed uh, all of 1991 and 92. Uh, during that time, uh, I collected uh, 1,400 index cards. So you can just imagine this. This was 1991. It was pre-laptop, and um, I, uh, I typed 90 words a minute, so uh, I prepared, uh, anytime I got a business card, I put it on an index card, uh, correctly uh, written. And I also had, at that point, on uh, a desk computer, uh, a database that I built. And it's very important when you're uh, um, out and about networking that you get the right information on people and that you uh, keep track of it appropriately. Uh, 1,400 index cards uh, at the end of my search in 92 occupied three file drawers. Uh, and again, they were in a, a, a database as well. 
Uh, and that, that's uh, uh, the first point I would like to make to all of you uh, is that uh, an Excel spreadsheet, and many of my friends rely on Excel spreadsheets because they're accounting types, uh, will not work. Uh, it'll help you for your first 25 to 30 uh, networking contacts, but after that, everything spins out of control. If you think about uh, uh, an index card and the information that might be on it, it's very easy to page through a box of index cards and see who you might be in touch with next. And that's the key, uh, is uh, uh, having the ability to go through who you know uh, and uh, touch them again, if you will, uh, at some point. So uh, one of the tools that I'm aware of is uh, you need to get yourself uh, a contact database package. The only one I'm really somewhat familiar with is ACK, that's capital A, capital C, capital T, exclamation, available through uh, in our bookstores everywhere, uh, like Staples, uh, supply, office supply places. Uh, but there are other, there are free contact database packages. Uh, but this is not something you want to skimp on. Get yourself a professional tool. There is just no other way to keep control over all the people you are about to meet uh, through the descriptions I'm going to give you next, okay? So just a simple definition of networking, which I will read. Uh, networking is a process uh, by which you create meaningful business contacts and relationships, and that's the key part, that further your career and enhance your professional life. And that's really the truth here. Uh, you know, uh, networking is networking is networking. And uh, what you're really trying to do is expand the number of people that you know. And uh, we don't want to put a negative spin on the fact that you might be uh, looking for employment at this point. Uh, that's just uh, a fact of life. Uh, jobs today, the gold watch is gone. And uh, most of the, almost everybody in this audience, uh, and I hope lots of you are listening in, uh, are going to be changing jobs constantly. Uh, well, perhaps constantly isn't the right word, but frequently. Uh, two to three years, uh, four years, five years is a long stretch of time in today's world. And uh, one of the things that we do in our networking group is uh, educate people on the fact that you're never actually employed you're just between searches. And it's a key thing to keep in mind and in your the back of your mind uh, as you're built, this is a, a skill building exercise that you will find useful for the rest of your life. Um, there was an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal this past Saturday on uh, the clean way to network. And uh, there were a few, none of the points in it uh, uh, caused me any disagreement. But there is a certain urgency to networking if you're looking for work and you need to be comfortable with the idea that as you're networking with people, you will have plenty of opportunities uh, to pay people back. So to give you just a, a brief history of networking, uh, I'm sure everyone, uh, you know, old school ties, th these are familiar phrases uh, and um, uh, where, where this really came to be well recognized was during the wave in the 1990s of uh, outplacement firms. And uh, they did a lot of research and they came up with the idea that um, uh, the way people were finding jobs, duh, uh, was networking. And uh, unfortunately, uh, they, tr they taught networking. Uh, there's a gentleman who passed away several years ago by the name of John Lucht, L-U-C-H-T. He read a, wrote a book called Rites of Passage and he described this as the NFL approach to networking, where you find somebody and you hold them down until they give you three names. This is not real networking. Real networking is, again, creating uh, business relationships that will serve you well uh, for the rest of your career and really for the rest of your life. Um, I would mention that uh, in the 1969 and 70, I was in the uh, United States Army. And uh, I worked for a gentleman by the name of George Hoyer. Uh, he was the area sergeant. And every, every day or every other day, he would get up from his desk and he says, I'm going out. He would say, I'm going out politicking. Not networking within your company, uh, I would suggest to you, is every bit as important as networking in the outside world. Uh, among the people that I know uh, who are financial people, 
they oftentimes do not know anybody really outside of their company. Uh, oftentimes the people that they know are lawyers, accountants, um, and other people who service their business. Uh, and uh, sadly, many of those people, uh, you know, you feel they have some obligation to you uh, and they will see you, uh, but sadly they, uh, they pretend to help because the people that they know are clients. Those are people you would like to see uh, and meet, uh, but there's no money in it for them. You know, follow the money. Uh, there is no money in it for them. And the best they can hope to do is uh, not lose a client if they introduce you. So they do the worst possible thing, which is pretending to help. Uh, your best resource uh, in uh, networking uh, is the following three things. Uh, networking is really three major things. Uh, number one, uh, keeping in touch with your old friends. Uh, if you don't keep in touch with your old friends, they don't know that you still love them. If you're uh, saving them for some purpose, um, it, it's not beneficial to you. Out of sight, out of mind uh, is operative here. And uh, you need to reach out to them uh, periodically and uh, let them know what you're doing. And believe it, they are interested in you. Uh, I would also suggest to you that there are people who you have worked with over the years who uh, know and respect you. And uh, even though you have not been in touch with them for many, many years, uh, you will be surprised how delighted they are to hear from you. Uh, let's face facts, they didn't reach out to you either. So when you reach out to them, uh, you will find they'll be pleased to hear from you. And that's one of your first steps. Uh, the second thing is always be making new friends. Uh, lots of ways to do it. Uh, there's always more and more people to meet in the world. And uh, the third part of networking, so the three kinds, uh, your old friends, your new friends, uh, and this is the most important part, is introducing your new friends to your old friends. Uh, networking is the gift that keeps on giving. So as you're out and about networking and you meet people, the first thought in your mind is, who do you already know that would benefit uh, by meeting these people. And there's always somebody. Uh, when you talk to people, um, it's very important that you do, you ask for the right thing. Uh, networking has been uh, very much tied to job search. And perhaps in some respects, that's a sad thing uh, because it's really about building your own personal relationships that will benefit you. Uh, you want to be uh, asking the right question. And the right question is, who do you know that will understand what I do? Uh, the knowledge that somebody would know about an open job is generally not there. Uh, that's just not how people operate. So if you ask people that they know about any open jobs, they don't. If you ask them uh, if the people they're going to introduce you to would be interested in hiring you, they have no clue. And it's a showstopper. If, on the other hand, you just set the bar low and ask people to introduce you to people who understand what you do, they it's a it's a um, a low stress conversation with those people. There's nothing on the table, there's no specific thing that they have to have to do for you. And uh, people who are introduced to you who will understand what you do, uh, will be happy to talk to you. There's always information in talking to people uh, who uh, do what you do. Uh, I have, over the years, been introduced to people from the advertising business. It's a great conversation, always. Uh, uh, many of the members of our networking group, for example, are in the uh, asset management space. They manage money for people, portfolios of marketable securities, and when those people have conversations, I've seen them in meetings, I have no clue what they're talking about, but they do. And, and that's the difference. Uh, once you hit middle age, uh, and that starts earlier and earlier these days, I would say uh, late 30s, early 40s, you have arrived. And if you think about uh, how many years of work experience you might need to be proficient in your profession, uh, it can't be more than 20. 
I certainly wouldn't want a business that required more than 20 years of work experience. So once you reach that stage, the three people, who, three groups of people who are going to help you are people who know you, uh, people who know of you, and people who they know. Uh, that's the sum total of it. And uh, you have so many tools today uh, that we didn't have back in 1990 and 91. Uh, and uh, have at it. Uh, everybody today is findable. And uh, even cold calling is on the table uh, when you're trying to build your network. Uh, the Internet is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, God bless Al Gore for inventing it. He, uh, he, if you want to find people, for example, at private equity groups, every private equity group has a website. Every company has a website where you can educate yourself about the company and you can use uh, this platform we're on right now, LinkedIn, and find people from those companies if they're in your space, if they're working at companies uh, that you have worked with before, or they have worked at companies you have worked at. Uh, there's a link there, and they will uh, generally accept your invitations. And then you can, you can go back and forth with the tools you have on the internet and find more people. You're trying to build your database of people who you know. Uh, the classic joke, how many people does it take to turn in a light bulb? Well, to build your career and to build your network, it takes a lot of people. Uh, at this point in my life, uh, I am known to 36,000 roughly members of my network, and I probably know another. Uh, I probably know another 50,000 people who know who I am. I don't know all of them. Pers I don't know them personally, uh, but all that's needed here is that they know who you are, and, and that's what you're trying to achieve: some visibility within your within your profession. Uh, you have to be in networking for the long term, uh, and that's the key. Uh, one of my mantras is uh, the more you help other people, the more you help yourself. A uh, very important concept, and I can give you a quick, simple example. Uh, if, you, for, if you helped somebody that you know with their resume, let's assume you know how to dot your I's and cross your T's at the very least, uh, in working with someone else on their resume, you can't help but build your skills in resume writing. And by looking at other people's resumes and how they're presenting their information, you will get ideas for your own resume, if that's the game you're working on. All of these people that you are going to be building in your network will be invaluable to you when you're actually working. Uh, it's very important to be able to have a body of people to reach out to when you're struggling with business problems. Sometimes you just have to talk it through with somebody. They don't even have to have an answer for you. Just the act of talking it through with someone you know and trust uh, puts you on the right road. Uh, the reality of networking, uh, I was, as you know, as I mentioned in the uh, advertising business, uh, I came up, we didn't have uh, the Red Cross as a client, uh, but I came up with a slogan for them, uh, give blood. It's not like we're asking for money. Uh, and when you're networking, uh, the give blood part is, is the most important part. Uh, you are uh, at all times, you have to be committed. You have to be in the game to win. Uh, the other thing that I was told when I first, uh, my first job out of the Army, I worked at B. Altman and Company, as an internal auditor, and our HR director uh, told the following story about uh, the chicken and the pig uh, who went into business making ham and eggs. And the story was one of them was making a bigger commitment. If you're not committed to the networking process, uh, you're the chicken. And it's not a big commitment. Uh, you have to be all in at all times. And in my life, my doors are open to everybody who wants help. Uh, I take all phone calls. Uh, anybody who wants to write to me, uh, including anybody in this audience who is not a member of my networking group, I will always try to help people because it's you always win. Uh, you don't win immediately. 
Uh, there is no one-to-one, -one, uh, but you really do win uh, if you help everybody who comes across your path. Uh, the, the next thing we're going to talk about here uh, is why you network. So the reason you network, and I've been uh, talking about this a bit, is to build friendships to enhance your life. Uh, it, it's, it's that focus, uh, the people that you meet uh, will at all times be available to you uh, and there'll be resources to you. Uh, but it's the long term. It's for the rest of your career. And the people are working longer and longer these days. Uh, I'm in my 70s now and I still work every day and uh, I still talk to lots and lots of people. Uh, it's a goal that I would recommend for all of you. Uh, golf every day is not everything it's cracked up to be. So if you focus on your long-term career goals uh, and uh, working for the rest of your, as long as you want to work, that you have good health, uh, you'll find uh, these networking is something that will make your life uh, more enjoyable, hearing from old friends. Uh, after 40, uh, almost all the jobs you are going to get are going to be filled by networking. Uh, we have in today's world uh, job boards. Uh, I've watched. I've watched the growth of the, all these job boards. The monster board was really the one of the first ones. Hot jobs, Glassdoor, all of these things out there appear to list jobs, and uh, they're all very amusing. Uh, the problem uh, out in the world is that the job boards it's click and shoot, and lots and lots of people click and shoot. Cab drivers in Chicago, no offense to them, uh, apply for CFO jobs uh, in other parts of the country. They do it. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, I had lunch with a retained recruiter uh, several years ago, and he told me anything he posts on a job board, he will get 500 responses to. I have no idea how you manage 500 emails, but uh, he has found ways to do it. It's just not uh, a beneficial thing. Uh, the job leads that you see on the internet uh, are useful to you uh, in that uh, you can look through them. Uh, you can see how your background compares to current job requirements and you can use them uh, to help uh, modify your resume and make sure that you're communicating things in current language. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, arcane language issues in any industry. And if you think about the process of people who are re reviewing resumes, they're oftentimes not the people who are doing the actual hiring. So job leads in and of themselves can be useful just to fine tune your own paperwork. Uh, so now talking about networking and approaching people that you don't know or don't know well or haven't talked to in a long time, uh, it's, it's very important to keep in mind that everybody wants to help. Uh, oftentimes they don't know how, uh, but everybody wants to help. So your goal, uh, asking for help and accepting help, although it's a big stumbling block, uh, what you want to do is uh, understand that everybody wants to help. If you think about the last time somebody asked you for help and you were able to provide it, I think you'll find that you enjoyed it. It's very satisfying uh, and you're an expert in something and you will find people uh, who reach out to you. Uh, even, you know, if you're just one chapter ahead of the class, that can be a lot for people. So keep that in mind. Everybody wants to help, but they don't know how. Uh, one of the tools that uh, is, I've heard uh, is popular in outplacement firms is uh, a target company list. And it's not that necessarily you would get a job at any one of those companies but it's a way of easing yourself into a conversation with people. So now again, the people that you're gonna be talking to are people who you have been recommended to reach out to by someone they know. And since there isn't a job on the table, you will find the conversation will flow. You just need a few simple tools uh, to get yourself started. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, that's kind of the process. Uh, I recommend when you're emailing people and asking for help to always send your resume. 
Uh, it may seem a little forward to be sending your resume, but let's uh, face the reality that the most uh, limited resource anybody has in today's world is their time. And if you're going to, if you're calling somebody uh, and let's say they have 15 minutes for you, you don't want to waste one of those 15 minutes doing a 90 second announcement like I did at the beginning of this discussion. If you send people your resume, a resume is generally speaking written in a consistent format and they're very easy to digest. They have the information that people are looking for to understand your background and to know, number one, whether they even want to talk to you. So now that you're past that, you give them a tool and when you chat with them, uh, they're actually able to take that resume and send it to people they know to get you started. Uh, I would mention at this point uh, the carelessness I see in people naming their resume file. It's actually a point of humor with me. Uh, the format you want to follow is last name, first name, middle initial. Uh, sometimes I see resume.rev57. I think to myself, boy, they really worked on that one. And, you know, it's just not something that uh, is effective. Uh, if you have your name, if you think about it, somebody uh, gets an email from you, uh, they download your resume to their hard drive, and then when they go to look for it, it's easy to find. You want to make everything that you do uh, easy for the people that you're talking to. Uh, so let's see. Uh, another point uh, I'd like you to keep in mind. Uh, people tend to be uh, a little hesitant to call people twice. Uh, and I want to uh, make sure uh, you understand and accept this point. Uh, again, everybody wants to help. Uh, most people will take your phone call and will try to be of help. Uh, but think about the uh, what's uh, about the whole process. And the whole process is that uh, they talk to you. They don't really know you, perhaps. Uh, they will give you a few contacts to see how you do. And this is where following up with them comes in. Following up with someone you've connected with is not necessarily calling them up to ask for another favor, but just to report in and let them know how you did with the people uh, they sent you to. Uh, it's a very important feedback for them. And what you will find is that at the minute that they hung up on you after that first phone call, they thought of three more people to give you. And if you don't circle back to them and report in uh, without asking for anything in additional, uh, you will miss out on those three additional people. Uh, that's the way people work. And, uh, you know, they thought of those three additional people. Uh, they turned to write you a note or they turned to call you back. And someone came into their office or somebody uh, called them and then they forgot about it. And if you don't follow up with them, they are not, nobody's going to chase you. Uh, but you have to follow up with people, not chase them, not stalk them, but you have to follow up with them uh, in an orderly manner. And, um, you know, any announcement, something you see in the newspaper that you think might interest them, uh, it's very important to think of ways to stay connected. I'll circle back to something I said earlier. Uh, now that you've made them a friend, there may be people you can send them uh, that you've now met. Uh, the Wall Street Journal article w uh, reminded me of something uh, that I should mention to you at this point as well, and that's that you, do, you don't, you don't want to waste the time of important people. So before you introduce one of your new friends to one of the people you've just met, send them on the resume, insist that anybody, any new friend give you their resume if they want help. Uh, and send it to them and get their permission to introduce your new friend to them. Uh, double blind, you know, both parties have to agree. And uh, then you're not pestering somebody. There are people uh, who, you know, you, you have a new friend, you think it might work, uh, and it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so you don't want to waste their time. They're valuable resources to you. And this is another way 
of you being in front of people one more time and you're trying to do the, a good thing. At that point where you're introducing a new friend, you are not asking for any additional favors. So now you're a good person. Uh, we're now 30 minutes into this uh, conversation and uh, we do have a message board. If anybody has questions, uh, please put them there. Otherwise, I will talk endlessly to the end of this hour that uh, I've designated for our talk. So now uh, we'll talk about job leads. Uh, as you're out and about in the world, uh, you are building up what I hope will be an inner circle of friends. And uh, the uh, uh, best trade goods in this world are job leads. Uh, and this, the dirty little secret in the world is that job leads are almost totally and completely worthless. So the sooner you can pass them on to anybody you know who might have interest, the better off you are. Uh, a core value of the Financial Executives Networking Group is we share all our job leads. Uh, if they're fresh, uh, if the people you know have strong connections to your background and should be considered for a job lead, uh, it's the greatest gift you can provide anybody and they will owe you big time. And that's your goal, is to build up a debt with people. The more favors you do for everybody that comes your way, the more likely you are not to collect one, but for someone randomly to be giving you a favor. You just never know where help comes from. And it's always a surprise. Uh, and well, not always, but uh, oftentimes it's a surprise. Uh, somebody does something for you that somebody says, oh, I got your name from, I don't even know who. Well, because you've been doing favors for other people. And again, job leads in and of themselves are totally and completely worthless. They've Any job lead you know about has been posted on LinkedIn, uh, Monster Board, Hot Jobs, any place uh, uh, today where they can post job leads. People post them everywhere. So it's not like you have this big secret, but the key here is, you have come across a job lead that is appropriate to people in your inner circle of friends. And it's viewed as a big favor. It puts you back in touch with all these people who are in your inner circle of friends. Uh, and uh, it, it benefits you. Even if it's a job lead that you are being considered for, uh, if you think about it, uh, any search firm, any corporation will have anywhere from five to 20 candidates for any opportunity. And what you want to do is flood it with people that you know. It's a pretty cool thing. And uh, what happens when you do that is that uh, if you can get somebody you know into the same search that you're working on, uh, you can trade inside information with each other. Uh, and the search firm, uh, when you tell them there's someone else that they should consider that you know while you're being considered, it's, it speaks to your confidence in your own credentials. Uh, so you win every which way you turn, and that's the goal. So how to get started? Uh, all of you know more people than you think you do. Uh, again, there's if you've been working for 20 years, there are all kinds of people that you know, and you just haven't thought about them in a while. Uh, when we get people um, registering for our networking group who claim they don't know any members, we do the same kinds of things that I'm going to suggest to you, which is go out on one of the resources, LinkedIn, for example, and search on your companies. Uh, that's a good place to start. Names will come up. And many of the people uh, that you uh, will find, uh, they may know of you. They definitely know people you know. Uh, all of the rascals in any company who uh, should have gotten fired but never did are well known to everybody. And uh, it's a way of starting a conversation. You can, you can send notes. Ne never, never, never request a link from someone on LinkedIn without putting in uh, a, a personal note. Uh, it's just... Uh, you want to look extremely professional, and that's how you look pro extremely professional. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but keep in mind, um, everything I know about you is sitting in front of me. 
if I don't know you personally. I'm building off a very small base, as opposed to the people who know and love you in your life, uh, the new people who you'll be uh, talking to when you're networking uh, don't know you. And uh, all they know are the few communications that you send them. So notes uh, have to be very personal. Uh, connecting with people who have worked with your companies is the first step. Uh, well, excuse me, the first step is people you know. And when you talk to people you know, they will remind you of other people. Uh, and you just have to take good notes. And you, you can make this easy and just say to people, even if you don't know how to reach these people, just give me names. Uh, you can do your own research. Uh, in today's world, everybody is findable. And if you get enough names, uh, you can... Um, uh, you can really go at it and uh, you can just start. If you can't immediately track somebody down, go to the next name on the list, see if you can track them down. Uh, bit by bit, uh, you will be able to fill out listings in your database. Uh, and that's really why I suggest to you, you get a contact database package of some kind. Uh, because filling it out uh, you know, if you don't immediately have everybody's email address, uh, personal address, uh, wh whatever it is you don't have, you can fill it out bit by bit. Uh, I subscribe to uh, several private equity group newsletters. And in marketing my search practice, uh, I reach out to private equity groups. And again, they all have websites. And I look through who has made their information available. And not everybody does. Uh, but if you can fill out their information, uh, you can reach out to them. Uh, now, when it comes to people who you know or used to know, uh, it's even easier. One little bit and bit by bit, you write to them and they write back. You're starting to gather in information to complete uh, your personal contact database system. So and, and again, all the tools uh, that you have at your disposal, you can find people who have worked at your companies. Uh, the next stage is reaching out to people who have worked at your competitors. Now, if you've been, if you've attended um, uh, meetings, uh, conferences, uh, we actually used to meet in person. No one's going to believe this, but we actually used to meet in person. Uh, if you uh, went to conferences and you met people who were at competing firms, maybe you remember their names. Maybe you got their business cards. Again, people who are in your space uh, will always talk to you. Uh, one of the misleading things is that this is a big world. This is not actually as big a world. If you're going to think of your networking in terms of the New York City telephone book, you are in big trouble. Uh, the world that you live in is actually a pretty small place. Uh, I have a cousin, and one of the amusing things she said to me a long, long time ago was, there were only 37 people in the world, and the rest is done with mirrors. It is really true. Uh, people who you know, know other people that you know. Uh, as you build up your inner circle of friends, you will run into yourself over and over again. So getting the right tools, uh, asking the right questions, uh, never asking about open jobs, and asking for people who understand what you do are the key elements in building your inner circle of friends. Uh, Again, uh, if you ask people about open jobs, uh, yeah, they, they heard about one two weeks ago. It would have been perfect for you. People love to torture you. Uh, but they don't really remember who it was because it wasn't important to them. Uh, and if you structure your question incorrectly, you're going to get a lot of blank stares. Uh, think about the knowledge that the people you're talking to actually have. So what they actually know are companies. I mentioned this earlier, your target company list. Uh, do you know anybody at Revlon? Well, or who worked at Revlon? No, but Revlon, cosmetics company. Uh, and let's see, uh, I know people at this cosmetics company or that cosmetics company, or is it co consumer packaged goods? You give people names of companies, that's something that's common knowledge and something that people use to trigger other memories. 
And those other memories, you know, useful people, uh, uh, people who are in marketing and you're in finance, they golf with people, they play tennis with people who might prove of interest to you. You might be looking for presidents and general managers. Some of the people that marketing people knew early in their career are now presidents of companies and they're trying to find a solid uh, financial person or whatever it is you do. Uh, you make those kinds of connections and they pay off, but you have to ask the right question and asking questions, companies that are fast growing, companies that have a need uh, in this particular area, they don't know. And it's a showstopper. People then feel stupid and they don't want to feel stupid. So they end the conversation. On the other hand, again, if you just ask them the people who are in this space or that space uh, or at this company or have worked at that some other company, uh, that's an easy thing to key off of and they will have answers for you. Uh, so uh, that's how it all goes. So now we're going to talk about one of the most important tools uh, in your quiver, and that's your outgoing signature. Uh, and we're going to flash that up on the screen for you. And I'm going to take apart uh, the outgoing signature, and you'll see how to make it work for you. Uh, this is my outgoing signature for the networking group. And the key elements to it uh, are, uh, number one, uh, my greeting to use. Uh, I go by Matt. If someone call, this is not a guessing game that you want to present to people. If your name is Richard and you go by Rick, uh, your outgoing signature has Rick. Uh, if you just have Matthew and you go by Matt, uh, the conversation runs something like this. Uh, Richard, how are you? Oh, no, no. Call me Rich. Call me Rick. Uh, call me Richard. Uh, you know, right away, we're trying to be friends and you're turning this into a guessing game. Uh, you don't want to do that. So greeting to use is key. Uh, following that is my full business card information. And I emphasize that. You are now creating uh, a database of people that you know. Guess what? You want the people on the other end to be filling out their database of people that they know and you want to be in it. And you don't want them to have to ask for your any of your information. So an address, uh, you know, if you have any concerns about giving people your physical address, I know women oftentimes do not like to do that. Uh, at a minimum, you need to have a city state. And the reason for that is you need to let people know your time zone. If they don't know your time zone, they're in California, they don't know when to call you. Uh, and you need to, uh, you, if you miss one phone call out of 50, that could be the phone call that you want. Uh, everything needs to look good. Uh, I am into upper casing and lower casing. You see my outgoing signature has my name upper cased and lower cased. Um, my business address is also uh, properly upper cased and lower cased. And the reason for that is it enhances readability. Uh, you would be surprised the number of people who from time to time write back to me and just use, they put two D's in bud, uh, and um, they just don't put in the the in front of F-E-N-G, and I don't hear from them. And the return message uh, goes into their, goes back to their computer, but they don't notice it. They never hear from me. They think I didn't reach out to them, when in fact I didn't get it. So uh, it's very important that everything be easy to read. And again, you're giving people enough information to fill out their contact database management system. Okay, uh, phone numbers, uh, call me an accountant and I've been called worse, but I believe numbers should line up. And the easy way to do that is by putting them on the left and putting the labels on the right. Uh, very easy to do. Uh, I have a little slogan after my outgoing signature. Uh, it's just because I run this networking group and uh, this, this is one of our mantras. Uh, I would not recommend putting in uh, religious statements, uh, you have to be very careful uh, not offending anybody uh, in today's world. Everybody has a chip on their shoulder, so be careful what you put down there, all right? Uh, it may be something that you believe in, uh, but other people may not. So just be careful, 
uh, do what you're, you feel comfortable doing on your outgoing signature. Outgoing signatures uh, for networking purposes go on every communication, including replies. Uh, and by the way, if you're using Gmail, uh, Gmail is just lowercase because it's not important. Okay. If it's a company, uh, it should be, if you're using your business email address, I recommend uppercasing and lowercasing it. Uh, I can't believe people don't do it. Uh, it just looks nicer. It looks more professional. Uh, and if you remember the Godfather movie where uh, the, the guy with the horse's head and all that, he said, I can't afford to look foolish. And when you're uh, building up your inner circle of friends and doing your networking, you cannot afford to look foolish. There is nothing casual about networking. It is, it's a serious endeavor and you need, need to take it seriously. Uh, let me remind you again, we're down to the last 15 minutes. If you have questions, uh, please put them in the uh, chat box and uh, I'll try to answer them. I'm gonna leave a few minutes at the end. So uh, uh, networking uh, is magic uh, because a lot of things about networking are not entirely obvious and the results will oftentimes surprise you. So that's why I call it networking. It's not exactly asking for a favor from people. Uh, I used to be very concerned uh, back in my youth, uh, asking people uh, for favors, uh, because I felt if I asked somebody for a favor, uh, I would have to repay it to that person. And it was only uh, when I got wiser that I realized that I could ask people for favors and oftentimes they didn't ask for a favor back. Oftentimes with important people, you cannot do a favor for somebody who's really important. There's just, it's just not practical. But uh, in our networking group, uh, we are running an open market in favors. And um, you do, people do favors for you and your only obligation, and this is the way I'd like to think you to think about it, is you are open to doing favors for anyone who crosses your path. That's the key, okay? Uh, there's no wonder one result when you do networking. Uh, it's no quid pro quo, uh, but things do happen. Uh, if you think about the process of finding a great restaurant, uh, you would not ask somebody in Chicago for a great restaurant in downtown or midtown Manhattan. They may or may not know. They don't live there, uh, they may not know. So as you focus your networking, the people who know you and know people who will understand your background, you're being very focused. And the path is more direct uh, than you would imagine. So uh, that's why one of the reasons why it works. Uh, people hopefully will give you non-judgmental support. Uh, I, one of the stories I tell in my uh, uh, networking group meetings is that uh, no one will do you a favor because they feel sorry for you. Uh, if you remember in the beginning of the movie Patton, where he talks about why America was going to win the war, it was that uh, Americans will not tolerate a loser. Uh, and most people really, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly uh, uh, I'm amenable to giving out sandwiches in the Bowery, but that's not what this is about. It's very important that you uh, appear to be a winner because you are. Uh, if you've gotten through 20 years of work and you've had a senior level job, uh, you're a winner. Uh, just because you might be between assignments at the moment, uh, none of that has gone away. Uh, networking is not a job interview. And I think this is very important. Uh, if you're, again, I've talked about this a little bit earlier in the conversation. Um, if you're, um, thinking about it as a job interview. A job interview, there's something on the table. People are screening for something. Uh, if you do your networking right, you're in front of people who know people, uh, who, who know people uh, that you, you need to know. And um, the people that you're talking to, they've, you've come to them from a friend. And because of that, they will dump all their problems on you. And guess what? You probably know how to solve many of those problems. And that's what will make what will make your networking process work. 
picking the right people to talk to, getting connected to people who understand what you do. They will discuss their problems with you and you will have solutions. They will either have something for you, something that needs to be solved. Uh, as I often say, there aren't a lot of jobs in this world, but there are sure a lot of problems. And if you know how to solve them, let me tell you, there aren't all that many people in this world who actually know how to solve problems. And if you're one of them, you will find what I call work opportunities. Uh, so now we'll go to the uh, last thing I want to share with you, uh, which is uh, what life is all about, the meaning and purpose of life. Uh, life is about making new friends, helping old friends, and feeling needed. Uh, there really aren't any other explanations required. And I hope all of you who uh, have attended this uh, session well, and those of you who uh, may listen to this uh, after the fact will know that you can reach out to me. Uh, my door is always open. And uh, I hope that uh, you will uh, connect with me on LinkedIn if you're of a mind to do that. And uh, if you're a CFO controller, a treasurer type, I would encourage you, if you're not a member, to visit our website and consider joining. Uh, we, if you don't think you know somebody, as I mentioned before, we will help you find somebody from within our organization. So now I'm going to end. And um, uh, if there are questions from the audience, please put them in our chat box. I've covered a lot of ground. And we still have uh, five minutes to go. All right, well, everybody has uh, no questions. Uh, I guess I've been very thorough. And I want to thank you for joining me on Chat with Matt, uh, the magic of networking. Uh, I'm, If we're successful and uh, this generates uh, interest, uh, we're going to be doing more of these. Uh, I think my next one is going to be on interviewing live and on Zoom. And uh, we'll see you again on Chat with Matt.